My first guest is a legendary performer and one of the biggest stars on the planet. He's a multiple award-winning actor and comedian that's been making us laugh for the past 40 years. His highly anticipated sequel, Coming to America, is available on Amazon Prime Video on March 5th, next Friday, March 5th. It is going to break Amazon Prime Video. That's how funny this thing is. Here he is, Eddie Murphy. Eddie, thank hey, you so much. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Oh, are you kidding me? I, I always love having you here. I appreciate this. Uh, the last time you were on our show was a little over a year ago when we had people in the audience. Uh, and uh, you were hosting Saturday Night Live for the first time in 35 yeah. years. And you knocked yeah. it out of the park. I loved it. Yeah, that was a great show business moment for me. To go back to the show and have the show be as good as it was and for so many people to tune in and... That was that was a great show business moment for me. It, for everybody, everyone needed. It was just so perfect and it was funny. And you won an Emmy. Congratulations for that. Uh, and oh I, yeah, yeah. Did you? That feel, was the cherry on top. Yeah, that was the extra jab because you go, wow, that was I'm just like, doing this that for was fun. Like, that was like you know winning the basketball game at the buzzer, but you by dunking and, and you shattered the backboard. Yeah, I got <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> Yeah, and then, then they lift <laughs> that you was up. A moment like that. They lift yeah, you up. It was an awesome yeah. Moment. Uh, uh, what was it like going back to Studio 8H? And did, did what was your memory? Were you like, oh yeah? Is it, what was the night like? It was surreal. It was surreal, and I, I was tripping off of how it's the exact same. You know, it's the same. They've been doing that show the same way for 45 years. It's a trip, the exact same way. So it was a trip. It was like going back to high school and them giving you your old schedule. And you'd be like, OK, I have lunch at this and I got science at 12. Uh, that's what it was like. <laughs> yeah, was a bunch of new, but a new students, though. You go sit in your old classroom and you look at your, my old locker. It was that kind of thing. It was so good. Uh, congrats on that. I just loved every single thing. I would like, honestly, I was Thanks. nerding out and like, uh, it was just well done. It was just a home run, home run. Uh, and speaking of home runs, I got to talk about coming to America. Uh, the yeah. sequel is something that people have been wanting since the first one came out in uh, 1988. Why was, the, why was now the right time? How did you know to do it now? We never thought about doing a sequel to the movie. We thought it was over because the story ended with him going off. It looked like they was going to live happily ever after, and that was the end of the story. And then the movie became this cult movie. Like, you know, of all the movies that I've done, Coming to America is the one that like worked its way into the culture in all these different ways, little catchphrases from the movie. Yeah. Quest, Quest used to have a band called the, the, the Randy Watson Experience. Quest Love, he did, he used to have a little, so it's like, you have stuff like that and you have like uh, on, 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 on Halloween, people get dressed up as characters from coming to America. There's a restaurant in New York, I mean in, in LA, that on Halloween changes itself into McDowell's restaurant and they have like, uh, uh, sexual chocolate milkshakes and stuff. So it was like, yo, this movie's like a cult movie. <laughs> you know, so I was like, yo, so that it took 25 years for it to become that. Then I started, you know, thinking, hey, if I could figure out a way to, to connect those dots, we could do a sequel to those movies. And I got an idea and it all kind of came together. Uh, can you set up for everyone where the sequel picks up? The sequel picks up 30 years later. And um, I'm, we're right in, the, we're, we're in the middle of our happily ever after. And then, uh, then we, ha out, we have to deal with a very uh, modern problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> our, fairy, our fairy tale is disrupted by a very modern problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, exactly right. Uh, it is so beyond funny. I want to get, I mean, uh, just crush. I mean, just crush. You uh, doing all your characters. Uh, the barbershop crew is back. Uh, 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 Arsenio doing the other characters. Uh, Leslie Jones, by the way. Wow. Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones. How about this? Leslie Jones in this movie is insane. I mean, everyone's home right now. We need something funny. It is so yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah, it's nice. It's funny. Like, it's funny hard. and put a little smile on your heart. It's, it's a nice little movie. I'm so proud of it. And the spoilers, I don't want to spoil everything, but Wesley Snipes? Wesley Snipes. I just did... Uh, last year I did a Dolomite is my name, Wesley Snipes, yep. and uh, we had such an incredible uh, time making that film and had a, such a strong screen chemistry. I just wanted to work with him right again and we went right into this. The role that he's playing in the movie, originally I was supposed to play the uh, General Izzy. I was supposed to be the General Izzy 
and I was supposed to be the witch doctor. And it was like, uh, Wesley would be so much better in that role. Because <laughs> it was like, because it, Wesley could be menacing. And if I would have been the, the, the general, I would have just been funny. And it would have been me you know, being threatened by one of my characters. It wouldn't have been the same. But Wesley brought this whole other <laughs> to it and just He's jumped menacing, off the screen. But funny. But and funny, yeah. Like when he See, opening, you know what people, you know, people he, forgot about that 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 Wesley could do everything because Wesley became famous for doing them action movies and became this big action star. People forgot that Wesley is could do Wesley could do drama. Wesley could do comedy. Wesley could do action movies. However you want to cut, jump. Wesley could do it. He was yeah. So, white man can't jump. Tu Wong Fu. Wesley is the great Fu. Wesley Snipes. He was the great. great Wesley Snipes, yo. And uh, yeah, and, he crushed this movie. And the, I, and I have to, Randy Watson, Sexual Chocolate. Uh, it, it, That's that was, my favorite of all the characters to do. Is uh, Randy Watson? If, if I could figure out a way to do a whole Randy Watson movie, I would do it. He, he he's a funny character. The mic drop. I've yes. I've heard, seen this on the internet. There's a debate. There's something around. People yes. think people say that that is the very first ever. Mic drop in the history yeah, and of I don't pop know culture. What, I don't know what anyone's debating about. Because I heard somebody say, well, the, somebody was like, oh, it started with rappers. The very first mic drop ever, ever, where it's like, what I said was so, you know, so fly, there's nothing left to say, and I'm dropping the mic. That's Randy Watson. Now, in 1983, at the end of Delirious, I threw my mic down, and it slid down to the ground. But that wasn't a mic drop. I said, thank you and good night. I used to throw the mic down. Cool. It wasn't like a, you know, I crushed it and dropped. The very first one to do that is Randy Watson. Wow. And I defy anyone to find any footage of anyone <laughs> doing, doing that before Randy Watson. Yeah, I agree. Was it Whitney Houston? What did he say? He's saying, why did he drop the mic He's, again? Yeah, he was uh, the greatest love of all. The greatest love and of all. And then, you know, he was <laughs> he crushed and dropped the mic at the end. Oh, my gosh. And you know what? That was improvised. Not That was an improvised moment. And uh, the name of the band, Sexual Chocolate, that night I must have said 10, every take I would say a different name to the band. And this is my band so-and-so. And it just would get more and more ridiculous. Then that was the ridiculous one that stayed in with Somewhere there's all these other names of that band that night. Sexual Chocolate, I'm telling you. Sexual it, Chocolate is that insane. That is the dumbest name I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> It's so levels of, it's levels of <laughs> funny. It's levels. Yeah. But you don't, you, someone yeah. should make a real Sexual Chocolate. Just call the Willy Wonka people or whoever makes chocolate bars, Hershey's or whatever. They, they just, said Amazon did this cool thing for uh, promotion for this film on, on uh, Valentine's Day. They sent out the, all these chocolates uh, with Randy Watson's picture on it. It was the <laughs> Randy Watson's sexual chocolates. <laughs> it was a picture of Randy singing. <laughs> chocolate is hysterical. <laughs> uh, I want to show. I want to show a clip, uh, and uh, hopefully it, it doesn't even do the film. I'm telling you, if you want to laugh, if you everyone needs a laugh right now. If you want some heart, you want just get together with uh, whoever you can. If in your pod or whatever you can do, call somebody. Say let's start at, at this time. You will love this movie. I want to show everyone a clip. Here's Eddie Murphy and coming to. America, take a look. Soon, next Dorian warriors will assassinate me. I have a child on the other side of the world. Take heart in your grief. You are king now. Be as your father. Bark orders at me. Throw things at me. It will make you happy. Prepare the royal jet. We are going back to America. Oh, hell no, your majesty. More with Eddie Murphy when we come back, everybody.